But at least we can see there is a shloka in the in the uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas. It says, "Sajapa Malikam Sugopya." Your japa should be kept very secret. And he says that after you chant your japa sankhya, keep the japa in a secret place. So this is I was just talking about the moni. moni what is why is moni amavasya called moni amavasya? So remember, back to the story. It's a long story. Many other points are coming up in the story. But it's okay because it's good to learn other things. So all the, all the, the Brita, Brita, Brita Munis and Rishis, Sarva Jagat, Brita, Sarva Jagat, Brita Muni Rishis, and then the Yovan, Yovan, Yovan Guru Yogi Shiva Sangha. All the oldest, all the very, very old, old, old wise sages and rishis like Angira and Agatsya and Bhargava and, and Palatsya and, and Devala and all these different great rishis from the universe, very ancient, ancient sages, hundreds and thousands of years old, and even Chirandivs, Chiranjeevs, live forever practically, like Loma Sarishi, Loma Sarishi. There's one great rishi called Loma Sarishi. When he, he lives, as as long as uh, he, when one of his hairs falls off his body, that he lives that long, and that that one hair falls off his body every day of Brahma. <laughs> so he lives for millions and millions of years. Loma, Loma, Loma means the hair, Roma, like Roma heart. So Loma, Loma Sarishi. So all these ancient sages were there, and Shiva was a young boy, very young boy. And they went, said, let's go ask Shiva some questions. They all went with different spiritual questions to ask Lord Shiva. He was just a young boy, about nine or ten years old. He was meditating, totally in moan. And the day they went to see him was Amavasya. So they all assembled around him. And they saw that he was totally in samadhi. He wasn't speaking anything. And they're all looking at each other and say, we should not disturb. He's in, he's in samadhi, deep meditation. Let us just sit for some time. So all the rishis and sages agreed to sit there, totally silent. No one's speaking. And no one's disturbing the, the Balak, Balak Shiva, Dakshineshwara. Dakshineshwara, the young boy form of Shiva in meditation on Kailash. So after about one hour, the rishis were looking at each other. They were all looking at each other, and they're speaking through their eyes. Did you get your questions answered? And they, each one said yes. They would say yes. I, and, they, and then they would look at each and one was taking account. And all the rishis were looking at each other and saying, yes, our questions were fully answered, even though Shiva didn't speak anything, and we didn't voice we didn't voice or speak our questions. So then they all left. So then at that time, all those sages said, this day, because the day that we met Shiva was in Magmas, it was Amavasya. So they said, this day should be known as Moni Amavasya. So that's how the Amavasya in Magmas, which comes every year in January and February, dark moon day, where there's no moon visible in the sky at night, that's why it's called Moni Amavasya, because of this history. That Lord Shiva answered all the questions of the students and all the old, old they're very old, old rishis. And he was only a young boy. But by the power of his tapabalam, his austerities, and by the power of his bhakti, his, sankha, his uh, Ram bhakti, and the power of his purity, without even speaking a word, just by silence, he answered everyone's questions, and he satisfied everyone's hearts. And he fulfilled everyone completely. So this is what I'm explaining. This story explains how the Indian gurus, traditional Indian gurus, they teach in two ways, through the Vani or through Moan, through silence. The disciples come, you have any questions? Okay, keep quiet, be quiet for 10 minutes. So then there, you mentally ask a question, the guru is quiet for 10 minutes, then he says, okay, you have your answer? He says, yes, I, I have the answer. <laughs> this is a very, very wonderful way to experience the transcendental position 
and power of Sri Guru. <laughs>